Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I see you guys are coming in this morning. I want to welcome you this morning. Amen. Praise God. Welcome um, to New Beginnings. Amen. Welcome to uh, Facebook family and friends. I am Minister Logan. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hello there, Brother Alonzo. Amen. Praise God. I'm so glad to be here this morning. Amen. I am in my living room. Praise God. And I am so excited to uh, come to you this morning. I want to welcome everybody. Just extend a warm welcome uh, to each and every one of you this morning. Our Facebook family. Amen. New Beginnings family. Praise God. And those who are visiting us for the very first time. Uh, my name is Minister Logan. Most of you guys at New Beginnings know who I am. However, for those who don't know me, I am uh, been with New Beginnings for a long time. And so I'm standing in for Pastor Wright this morning. Uh, he and Pastor Leslie are away uh, on their spring break with their family. And so as you come in, we're so excited to have you all and see every each and every one of you uh, this morning. Praise God. Praise God. So thank you so very much for being here. Uh, Pastor Wright uh, is not here this morning, as I said, uh, but he's left you in good hands. I'm here this morning to bring you the word. So if uh, with that being said, we're going to get right into prayer. Amen. And we're going to get started on the word. Amen. So if you would be, uh, if you would join me just by bowing your head right where you are, amen, and we're going to get in the word and we'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory today. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for your word going forth. We declare in the name of Jesus that it will not go forth unhindered or influenced by any outside forces. Father, we just thank you right now that your word will fall on the good ground of our heart. And as a result, we will grow up, Father. We'll be growing up in the fullness and the measure and the stature of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We just take the opportunity now because it's a right. We bind up the devil. We render him helpless and a defeated foe. We thank you, Father God, for victory and give you all the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, uh, we're going to get right into the word. As you know, Pastor Wright has been ministering along the lines of um, a healing. And so we're going to stay right there in that vein. However, I'm going to go a little bit, uh, just a little bit different. I'm going to stay there, but I'm going to go a little bit different. I want you to turn uh, with me in your Bibles. We have two text scriptures this morning. Galatians chapter 3. And verse 13, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Let's go there. I'll be reading it uh, from the King James Version and also uh, the Amplified Version. Then you can uh, go over. You can go over there and find that. Now we're going to go to Hebrews uh, chapter 12 and also verses 2 and 3. But let's start at Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Galatians 3.13. It says, uh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Amen. Now the Amplified Version. It says, Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who who hangs, that is crucified on a tree, which is the cross. Amen. We see here in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, very familiar passage of scripture when you're talking about healing. Uh, we see here that even in the Amplified, the word, when we look at the word redeemed, praise God, we, that word there means to purchase. So Christ Jesus himself uh, became a curse for us. Uh, amen. For it is written, 
that cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And whenever I find uh, in the scriptures something is written, I go to see where it's written, amen. And where it's uh, written is uh, over in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse uh, 23 and part B of that scripture. You can find that scripture there. Amen. But it tells us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So what is the curse of the law? Well, uh, death is the curse of the law. Poverty is the curse of the law. And sickness is the curse of the law. That is because of Adam's disobedience. When Adam disobeyed, uh, dis disobeyed, excuse me, God, then the curse came into the earth. But Christ himself redeemed us. He paid the ultimate price for our healing, for death. He gave us life for par poverty. He gave us wealth and for sickness. He gave us health and healing. And so now that we are, are believers, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and savior. Then we have to lay hold of those things that Christ has given to us. Now let's go over to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to start reading at verse 2 down to verse 3. Uh, in verse 2, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse three, amen. Verse three, for consider him. I want you to underline that, highlight that, make a mental note of that because you're going to hear that throughout my entire message. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Now, I read to you uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 2 and 3. We're going to be camping out in verse 2. I know you know what camping out means. You're going to stay right in verse 2. We're going to stay right in verse 2. We'll go to some other scriptures, but verse 2 uh, is where we will camp out. And verse 3 is going to be my hook. Now, some of you guys may not know what a hook is. I talked to my son, older son, some time ago, years ago in the music business when he was, uh, he had a band. And he told me, he said, Mama, this is my hook. And so I said, well, what is a hook? He said, it, it is the lyric in the song that keeps bringing you back. That's the part that you catch. You might not know all of the lyrics in the song, but there's a hook that you catch. So I want you to hook up this morning in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 3. Amen. It is the hook. And that hook is the title of my message this morning. The title of my message is to consider him and not them. Amen. I want you to consider him and not them. Because I tell you, when it comes to healing, I have experienced and I've been teaching healing now over 20 years. And I have had to have healing in my body. Amen. I've prayed for many people. Amen. Uh, in regards to healing. And just in the last year and, this, and, and part of this year, uh, the enemy have seemingly unleashed on me. Uh, in terms of, 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 of attacking my body, trying to attach himself, trying to attach something to me. And I have to continue to fight the good fight of faith. See, it's not just enough for me to teach it to others and myself be a castaway. If I fight hard and pray for you, I'm going to fight hard and pray for myself. But the devil, you know, he's a dog. And what I like to think of him as a dog with a leash on it, and I got the leash. So he can't go nowhere unless I allow him to go somewhere. And so what we have to do as believers, amen, we have to lay hold of the word of God and what God has said through his son, Jesus Christ. We have to consider him and not them. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to get rid of the them and then look at him. 
uh, because in, in uh, chapter 12, Hebrews, I mean, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, it tells us what to do. We are to look unto Jesus. Amen. Why should we look unto Jesus? Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, I'm going to explain this to you uh, in further detail, but I just want you to uh, say this out loud. I will consider him and not them. Amen. I'm going to consider him and not them. I'm going to look at him and not them. I'm going to, when it comes to healing, when it comes to poverty, when it comes to death, I'm not going to look at them. I'm going to look at him because he has already taken care of them so that I can live in him. Amen. Praise God. So what we're going to look at this morning, we're going to go in a little detail and I'm going to talk about redemption for a minute. Uh, just a minute. Amen. I believe you already know what redemption is. But uh, redemption, uh, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, involves deliverance. It involves deliverance. What is What are you being delivered from? Uh, both in the Old and the New, we were delivered uh, from bondage, and that was based upon a payment. Somebody had to pay for our deliverance. I've heard people say uh, salvation is free. But I don't believe salvation was free because somebody paid the price and his name is Jesus. And that's why I consider him and not them because ain't nobody paid the price but him. So I'm going to look at the person that paid the price and that's Jesus. I heard um, uh, Pastor Mark Hankins uh, one time he was at our church and, and he was ministering. Amen. And I, I, I heard him make a statement and that statement has stuck with me uh, over the, you know, how Pastor Pastor always tells us some things are taught and some things are caught. Well, this is what I caught from Pastor Mark Hankin. He told, he said to uh, the congregation, amen, you know when uh, the pastor, uh, anybody is, is, is uh, teaching or preaching or whatever they doing, you and you and I, we are sitting there, we are sitting at the feet of Jesus. And so when I heard Pastor Mark say this, and I believe this was a hook. I heard him say this. He said, you ought to dance with the one that brung you to the dance. Amen. You ought to dance with the one that brung you to the dance. That is why I consider Jesus him and not them. Because he's the one that brought me. He's the one that's kept me. He's the one that died for me. He's the one that shed the blood. I consider him and not them. And so when we look at redemption, we see here that Christ has redeemed us. He has paid the price. He purchased with his own blood. Amen. On the cross, he shed that blood. And so when you, the devil comes and steps to you, come on now, let me tell you, the devil, I said, is a dog. If he can't get you, he going to go through the back door. That's why you got to shut every door. You can't play with the devil. You play patty cake with the devil, he's going to be backing up. And the next thing you know, you over in his territory. Well, I don't plan to be in his territory because I'm going to stand flat foot on the word of God and I will consider him and not them because he is with the them. Come on now, somebody. I want you to say you got to shut every door. You got to shut every door. And I love what the Lord said, Jesus, the master, uh, said over in uh, St. John chapter 10. Uh, he says in verse 10, he, uh, uh, Jesus says now, for death, he's given us life. Uh, he says now, uh, the thief, he comes but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy and, and he will use any method, amen, any method to do that. And he'll, he, if he can't come at you one way, he'll come at you another way. But I want to tell you something this morning. I got something I want to tell you, and I want you to catch this. The devil don't change. He just comes with the same thing. I heard a good friend of mine says, he, this the devil, when he comes to you, he's coming with the same soup he had yesterday. He just warmed it over so you won't think it's the same soup. But he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And so that's why I don't pay no attention to him and what he's saying to me because he will come and if he can get your thoughts, your feet gonna follow your most dumb the thought. And if you, your thought 
your thinking is not right, then your talking is not going to be right. And if your talking not right, your walking not going to be right. If you start out talking crooked, guess what? You're going to be walking crooked. And I'm here to tell you this morning, you need to consider what Jesus said. You need to consider what Jesus did because what he did for you and what he's doing for us right now, he will do for us tomorrow because why? He's the same yesterday and forever. And so we're going to look at uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. We're going to go right there. Amen. And I'm going to stay. I told you we were going to camp out there. Amen. But before uh, we get right into the meat of what I got to say, and I got to hit it and run for the border pay, uh, because I am a, a, a person under authority. I have been given instruction and I'm going to follow those instructions. Amen. Praise God. Amen. How are you going to be a good leader if you can't be a good follower? That's just there for somebody. I'm going to talk to you this morning about the them first before I talk about him. Okay, Because him, once I tell you about him, it's going to set everything up for you to handle them. So now I'm going to talk about them. Who are the them this morning? The them are the uh, is death. It's poverty, it's sickness, that's the curse of the law. That's the them. And then over in Isaiah 54 and verse 15, amen, write that scripture down. Isaiah 54, if you can go to it, go on over there. I go over there, amen, I can quote it to you. But I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Isaiah 54 and verse 15. Look what the Bible says now. Now we know that God's word is truth. Over in St. John 17 and 17, Jesus told us, he told us that God's word is true. In Isaiah 54 and verse 15, look what the Bible said. The them going to come up against you. Come on now. The them is coming for you. Don't bury your head in the sand. All because I'm a believer. Everything is uh, going to be easy peasy. I'm going to be sliding on a banana peel. No, you're not. You're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to have to fight. And anybody that's in a fight, come on now, you're going to get hit. If you get think you're going to get in a fight and not get hit, then you don't need to get in the fight. Praise God. You need to just go on back home and sit down because they're going to gather together the devil coming at you. And sometimes he'll bring more than one against you. Let's look at verse 15. The Bible says, indeed, they shall surely uh, gather together, but not by me. They coming for you. The devil is, he's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. He's a murderer. He's been a murderer from the beginning. And he's coming for you. You say, well, Minister Logan, he ain't messing with me. Then I got a problem right there. And you do too. Because he's going to mess with you. Amen. He's going to mess with you. Why? Because he's messy. He, he messy. And so you got to be able to deal with him. One of the worst things that a believer can do when there is absence seemingly of trouble in their life to sit back, relax. No, you dig in. Amen. You dig in because you know he coming. I'm not telling you to go around to be devil conscious. No, that's what I'm the, the Bible tells us what to do. It says to study, to show yourself approved unto God. You need to get into that word so that you can know how to consider him and not them. Amen. So who are the them in uh, the flesh? The them in the flesh are the naysayers. Come on now. You know what naysayers are. Naysayers are cynics. Come on now. Naysayers are cynics. They are pessimists. Oh, they are pessimistic as opposed to being optimistic. They are what we call complainers. Amen. They always complaining. Amen. They are doubters. They are doubters. The enemy will not only send doubts in your head, but he'll send people to you with doubt. Come on, you, you, you've gone to the doctor, you got a report, and you might in, confide in somebody, and what they gonna tell you? They gonna tell you, well, child, my cousin had the same thing, and they died in six months. You can't consider them. You can't consider what they cause. You gotta consider him. Amen. What he said about your situation. Not about what they said or what the cousin said. I remember some years ago, we had a mission down on Ferris Street, amen, there at the YMCA. And uh, there was one family, that one lady came, but she brought our entire family 
to church there. And I would leave and others would go down there with me and we would have church at 12 o'clock. Hallelujah. And uh, this lady had been diagnosed with cancer. And so her sister told me, she said, well, the doctor uh, diagnosed with cancer and gave her a bad report. I said, well, we're going to pray for her. And, and when I called her up uh, to lay hands on her and believers get in faith with her, uh, I, I asked her, uh, you know, uh, 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 what she was standing on. That lady told me, she said, well, I don't know a whole lot of scripture. She said, but I'm not seeking a healing. I'm seeking the healer. Now this woman, come on now. I'm not seeking a healing. I'm seeking the healer. You got to consider him and not them. A lot of times we in the church uh, as believers, we get caught up in being parakeets. Come on now, you saying the right things, but are you believing the right things? When the devil steps to you, he's not just going to step to you uh, because he knows that you are perhaps grounded and rooted in the word. He going to go for your wife. He coming for your husband. He going to attack your children. He coming for your finances. He coming for you. But I just want to encourage you this morning. If you consider him, Come on now. He going to give you what you need for them. Amen. And I love what the word says over in St. John uh, 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 chapter, uh, uh, St. John chapter uh, 15 and verse 7. Yes, yeah, St. John chapter 15 and verse 7. Jesus said that if uh, you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now, shall is the strongest assertion in the English language. And I have learned. Let me just tell you, I have learned. Uh, look, y'all may see me preaching. Y'all may see me walking around here. Uh, hey, I've been through the storm and rain, but the storm and rain didn't take me out. Why didn't it take me out back then? I didn't give no regard to God nor man. But God kept me because he saw me this day preaching. And I'm telling you, God see you. And he not only see you, but he see your seed. And what you do today will determine what's going to happen to your seed. God told us, he said, for death, I've given you life. For poverty, I've given you wealth. For, he, uh, for sickness, I've given you health. You got to lay hold of those things, amen. You got to have bulldog faith, amen. You got to bear up under, amen, by standing on the word of God and not giving the devil no ground, no ground, amen. I say he might have you, you, you got to stay in the arena of faith. Thank you, Lord. He, you got to stay in the arena of faith. You in there a wrestling or whatever your sport may be. You in the arena, you got to stay him. Don't let him get you out of the arena. Even if he got you on the ropes, you hold your ground. You hold your ground. You say what God say. Come on now. The devil, he comes, he'll come for your marriage, try to lure your husband off and lure your wife off. He come for your children. And let me just tell you, in 2020, he came for my children. But he didn't know. He, who, he does not know who he working with. He working not just with Sandra Logan, but he's working with whoever is backing me up. And that's him. And I have all of heaven's arsenal at my disposal. And so that's why I consider him and not them. Amen. I know you're being blessed this morning because I'm being blessed. Amen. You can't pay attention to them or they or those. Come on now. Because the they, the those are the ones that's going to say no to God's way. They're going to say no to God's way. But you got to stay on God's side. You can't be straddled the fence. Let me tell you something else about healing. And when somebody come up to you, you believe in God for your healing. And someone comes up to you, amen, and they start to talking a lot of doubt and unbelief. And you start to agreeing with your head, uh-huh, because you don't want to come out and say what God is saying about that situation. Then you don't, or you don't say nothing at all. You're going to have to open up your mouth. Why? Because silence is consent. You got to consider what God says and not what they are saying. Amen. Uh, uh, you don't become uh, like the naysayers. In other words, don't uh, be uh, uh, fearful of human opinion because 
Humans got opinions, but the only opinion that matter is what God has said. Amen. What God has said. Praise God. I want you uh, to uh, uh, go over to Proverbs uh, chapter 29. Let's go over quickly here to Proverbs chapter 29. Praise God. I want to read something to you because you can't, you can't uh, uh, go with the them and the, and the, uh, the they. And the those, amen. Proverbs uh, 29, and let's look at verse 25. Proverbs 29 and verse 25. Let me get over there. Praise God. I'm usually using my phone, but hey, it'll work for me no matter what. Verse 25, it says here, the fear of man brings a snare. The fear, you are moved by other people's opinions. Don't be moved by other people's opinions. Their opinions don't matter uh, when you are fighting the good fight of faith regarding your healing. Come on, or uh, what the doctors have said to you, or uh, if you believe in for your finances. You can't, the only opinion that matters is what he says. You got to consider what he says about it. Amen. And you take a hold of that. Let me read this to you from the message version. It says the fear of human opinion disables. Come on. Uh, you from trusting in God. It protects you from that. Amen. You got to trust God. You got to trust God. You got to trust what Jesus said. Amen. Now I told you about the them. Let's go over and talk about him. Amen. Let's talk about him. As you know, we read in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 3, and I'm going to read this from the Amplified to you. I read it from, to you uh, at the beginning from the King James. But notice what the Amplified says of uh, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 3. It says, just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. But notice what this uh, scripture is saying. If you don't consider him, whew, if you don't consider him, you're going to grow weary and you're going to get tired. And when you get tired, you go somewhere and sit down. You stop speaking. You stop thinking on God. You start to thinking about now the devil have got you in a hole right there. He got you in a hole. When you stop saying what God is saying, you stop thinking what God is thinking. You're going to start saying what he is saying and what they is saying. Come on now. You're going to have to stop. You're going to have to open your mouth and say what he said. You're going to have to consider him and not them. Well, now, now just think about that. Uh, in verse chapter, in um, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, it told us here, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. That means he, he is the one uh, that authored faith and he showed us how to finish faith. Now, we have to go back to the cross. Where did he do this at? He hung on a cross. We saw that in Galatians chapter 3. And I'm just going to walk you through this. Amen. I'm going to walk you through it. Praise the Lord. I had to look around at the clock. But uh, pray, uh, through this cross situation, because the writer of Hebrew, uh, Hebrew takes us back to the cross. He, he tells us that we ought to consider him who endured such hostility. Let me just talk about this hostility, because as believers, we're going to endure some hostility. The hostility could be on your job. Come on now. Hostility could be in your family. The Bible, I read in, uh, one day in the word where it says a man's enemy is in his own house. It got to be that, but you got to be able uh, to consider him in that situation and not them. Praise God. So let's talk about this. When Jesus hung on the cross, I want to tell you why you should consider him. I want you to mark that in your comments. Why you should consider him and not them. Number one is that when Jesus hung on the cross, he was beaten beyond recognition. Isaiah 53 tells us that. He was beaten beyond recognition. He was subjected. Come on now. He was subjected to intense 
ugly verbal abuse. Come on now, you talk about somebody talking about you. Oh, they talked about Jesus. Come on, the soldiers, come on, that were there. They scoffed at him. Uh, come on now, the religious leaders, as they were in that day, they laughed at him. Come on now. Even they released a criminal in his place. Come on now. You got to consider, why should I consider him? Because this is why I should consider him. What he went through, I couldn't go through. Because why? He did it to show me how I can go through it. Come on now. That's why you should consider him and not them. No more. And now here's something else he did. He, this criminal that they released uh, in his place was called Barabbas. Come on now. The one who was guilty. Come on now. But Jesus here taking all this for the criminal. Come on. He was on the, he was there taking all this abuse for the ones that was laughing at him. Come on now. You got to consider him and not them. He, the ones that were talking about him. He was doing that for them. And the Bible tells me that he never said a mumbling word. He had to watch his words because if he opened his mouth, he could have called 10,000 angels. Come on, but he had to keep his mouth shut so he could go through all of that so that you and I can have life and life more abundantly. When you and I, the enemy come at us and attack our bodies so what we can do, he is showing us what he did. Amen. Not only that, what it was that for? It was for our redemption. Oh my goodness. What a supreme price that Jesus paid. It was one of the greatest, come on now, and the most single act of love that any person could do. And Jesus did that. So that's why you should consider him and not them. Come on now, somebody. Have you ever thought about have you ever just meditated? I know you've seen the passion of the, of the Christ and you saw the abuse. And, but even uh, Mel Gibson couldn't depict what it really was like. He got as close as God allowed him to get close. But it was deeper uh, than that. Because when they took him uh, to the scourging post, this is why we should consider him when it talks about our healing and when it talks about uh, God, how God want us to live in this earth. When we talk about our family, he didn't just uh, die uh, for me, but he died for my whole house. Come on now. He died for my whole house. And then when the devil comes for one of mine, come on now, I don't step back and join him in it. Come on now. I don't take league with him. Come on. I don't agree with him. Hey, man, I have said this and I'll say it again. And you can put it in your Facebook comment. I tell you this. If somebody came and told me that one of my children had stole Jesus off the cross, I would guess them give me high five. Because why? They need Jesus. Don't come tell me what my children are doing. Because I'm believing God for what God says about my children. He said that not only will well, I be saved, but my whole household shall be saved. And what Jesus did at that scourging post, that's why I consider him and not them. Come on now, somebody. And so when Jesus' body had already been ripped to shreds uh, uh, by the vicious beating, and where well, did that take place? That took place in the courtyard of Pontius Pilate's house. Come on now. They were surrounded uh, by the enemy. And when they beat him, it was a vicious beating. He uh, And what it was humiliating. Come on now. It was humiliating. But what did he do? We saw it there in Hebrews 12 and 2. He said, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He endured it because of the joy. Come on now. He says, hey, I'm doing this so that you can live. And you can live more abundantly. And when we don't take hold of what Jesus have done for us, we hang him on the cross all over again. As I said uh, before, uh, 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 before uh, uh, earlier, I said the enemy came at me this year. But guess what? I had to go in deeper because the harder he comes at me, the deeper I go in God. Come on now. I used to remember uh, uh, my my at uh, the church that I grew up in, a little Baptist church, and the saints of old used to sing, "As long as I live and trouble rise, 
I'll hasten to his throne. You need to be running to the throne room. Come on now. You got everything that you need. You got the name of Jesus. You got his word. You got his promises. Come on now. You got the promise. And let's, let's just look at, look at uh, this scripture here. Uh, when it says that uh, Jesus uh, uh, endured the cross. When I looked up uh, this uh, uh, scripture, it took me uh, to the uh, Greek word when it says Jesus endured the cross. The word endured uh, from the Greek is a compound word. It's H-U-P-O-M-E-N-O. Hupo meno. Hupo meno. So I know that's a big word, but minister long, what does that mean? That word there means to abide or to stay. Come on now. Abide or to stay. That's what Jesus did. He abided under all that abuse. He stayed right there. Amen. He took every bit of it. He took every bit of it. He stayed right there. So what is our response to that? We ought to consider him and not them. We ought to consider what he said and not what they say. Most of us hear what they are saying. Well, you know they say it. Amen. I don't care what they say. What did he say? What did he say? And like his mother said at that wedding that he went to when the wine ran out. Come on, what did he say? He, uh, she told them, whatever he say do, do it. Amen. So whatever Jesus say, he bore up under. He stayed right there. And he refused to stray from his position at that scourging post. Why? Because he was committed. He was committed to die for you. That's what he came for. That's what his mission was. And here we are today. We cannot commit to stay with the word. We cannot commit. We get a little trouble coming at us. Uh, instead of running to him, we run to them. Come on now. Don't run to them. Don't run to they. Don't see what they got to say. Let me just say, you go to see what he has to say. Amen. You got to, uh, regardless of the load that you got, regardless of the, of the opposition, regardless of the stress, regardless of the weight that comes against you, guess what? Don't move. Don't move off of God's word. I don't care if you got to get a towel and cry into it. You got to wipe your nose with the back of your hand. You keep that word coming out of your mouth. You keep it coming out of your mouth. Considering what he says. Stay put in the spot. Come on. And don't surrender to anyone or anything. Come on now. Anyone or anything or any thought. Cast down every high thing. Come on now. He didn't say that the thought that the devil was going to bring to us wasn't going to be a high. But we are to cast down every high thing. Amen. That tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Your greatest battle is going to be in your mind. If you can control your mind, come on, you can control the battle. Okay, control your mind, control the battle. Renew your mind. Consider him and not them. Amen. And because that word, uh, hupomino, that I told you about, that means to abide and to stay on. That is for, it pictures a person like this. Uh, some people say it's like bulldog faith. But it pictures a person that refuses to bend, refuses to break, refuses to surrender. Uh, because that person is convinced that the territory that he's standing in, that the promise he's standing on, or the principle that he has, has come under assault. That's what it all it is. You, all what you standing on, the ground that you have marked out for yourself, come on, and for you and your family. Amen. The principle that you have undertaken, he's coming for that. But guess what? You got all that you need. I have all that I need uh, because guess what? I have in me the power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. And I can stand my ground. Somebody say, stand your ground. Stand your ground. How do
do I stand my ground? I stand my ground by considering him and not them. Amen. Praise God. So I just want you to know, and I'm going to end with this scripture right here. Go with me to Philippians uh, chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Praise God. Let's look at this scripture here. Philippians uh, chapter 4. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, verse 13. You can do it. I say you can do it. You can stand your ground. You can consider him and not them. Praise God. Philippians chapter 4. Let me get over there. Here we go, right here. Let's look at verse 13. Philippians 4, 13. Amen. Uh, let's start at verse 12. Woo! Oh, no. Let's start at verse 11. I'm just following the Holy Ghost here. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 11 said, Now that I speak, Paul says here to the Philippian church, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Come on now. Whatever state you in, come on, God got you. How can I be content, Minister Logan, with all this going on? Because God got you. God got you. And then he goes on to say, verse 12, I know. You got to know. Come on now. You, when you do, you know. When you consider him and not them. For I know how to be abased. That means when I'm down. And I know how to abound. That means when I'm up. Everywhere. Come on. And in all things, I have learned. I said that to you earlier. I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. But verse 13 is the kicker here. I can do. Come on now. Bishop uh, Minister, uh, a message uh, uh, some time ago. Is your can do bigger than your want to? Come on now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why you should consider him and not them. Amen. Praise God. Well, I hope you were blessed by that word today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I could go on and on. Amen. But guess what? He, God got everything that you need. Amen. So why should I go to them when he got everything that I need? I'm going to consider him and not them. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I know that you were blessed uh, this morning as I was blessed. It uh, is uh, communion. Amen. It's communion time. So I'm going to give you the opportunity right now and go and gather. Amen. All of your communion elements. Praise God. This is Super Sunday. It's Super Sunday. Praise God. I know Pastor announced it last week. Hallelujah. And so all that I have said have brought us right here to Super Sunday. Amen. Uh, when we get ready to partake uh, in remembrance of what he did for us. Amen. In remembrance to what he did for us. And I want you to go with me. Amen. I'll wait a second here. I want you to go with me uh, uh, before I read to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to start reading at verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse uh, 26. Praise God. Uh, verse 26 says, uh, uh, I hope you're ready. Amen. It says verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, verse 27, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. We're going to examine ourselves in a minute here. We're going to pray. Amen. Verse 29, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But notice there in verse 26, 
It says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you can do this as many times as you want. Why? Because you are doing it in remembrance of what Jesus did at the cross. Uh, he says that, and, and he also says that, uh, the, uh, as we see in this verse 27, amen, in verse 26 and 27, the, the juice uh, that you have, it represents the blood and the bread represents his body. The blood that he shed and the uh, bread represents his body that was broken. The Bible talks about how he received 39 stripes save one. Where every known disease that is in the world today come from the root of 30, uh, uh, those uh, 39 diseases. So every time they beat Jesus at that scourging pole, every stripe took out blood. And that blood was for a disease. You can plead the blood of Jesus. Know that the blood of Jesus not only cleanses you, it not only saves you, but the blood of Jesus heals you. Amen. Praise God. So what we're going to uh, 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 do now, I want you to go over to another scripture, to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. And let's begin there at uh, verse 1. I'll be reading uh, down to... Uh, verse five, Isaiah 53, it says, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant as, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. Remember, I talked about that in my message, how at the scourging post, he was unrecognizable. Amen. I've heard pastors say this. He said that his back, it was like that of a farmer grazing his field. He was despised and rejected by men. I talked about that in my message. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. How did he become acquainted with grief? He became acquainted with grief because of the grief that we had. He didn't have no grief before. Amen. Our grief. And now that we can grieve godly, because that's what he did. And as we hid as it were our, and we hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised, but, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him uh, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Come on, he's smitten, stricken, strict, uh, afflicted. He was smitten of God. He was afflicted. Amen. So we thank God this morning for what Jesus did for us. Verse 5, for, but he was wounded. Come on, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Now, word transgression there, that word there means for the sins that we commit now. We miss the mark. Iniquity is the depth of sin. That means the generational sin. He took all of that uh, upon him. And the chastisement for our peace, what we should have got whipped with, it was put upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. Now, let's go back uh, to um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And uh, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to uh, pray. Amen. We're going to pray uh, because the Bible says there in verse 31, for if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Amen. Praise God. Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you did uh, through your son, Jesus, sending him to die on the cross for us. He was bruised, uh, yes, uh, for our transgression, wounded. He was there, uh, did all that for us. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. We thank you for that, Lord. We give you praise and glory for it. Hallelujah. And over uh, in 1 Peter uh, chapter 20, uh, chapter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, it says, by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Uh, Isaiah was looking toward the cross, but Peter was looking back at the cross. Let's pick up there at verse 23. 
at verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 23. And you have your bread. It says, for I received from the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He took bread. You have the bread right there. Uh, go ahead and receive that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being bruised for us. Hallelujah to your name. How all praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then uh, I gather your juice there. And at verse 24, it says, uh, uh, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And verse 25, it said, in the same manner, he also took the cup uh, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now go ahead and receive your juice. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just go ahead and shout hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thanking God for what he has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. And shedding his blood for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we just thank you guys for joining in this morning uh, for uh, 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 the today's service. Amen. I know you were expecting Pastor Wright, uh, but Pastor Wright will be back on next Sunday. Well, it's offering time. Hallelujah. Glorious opportunity to prosper. Hallelujah. Opportunity to prosper. Praise God. Amen. How many of you know you can't be God giving? You cannot beat God giving. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to read to you uh, uh, a verse of scripture. I can quote it, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. Malachi chapter 3. Amen. Malachi chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 8 through 10. Malachi chapter 3. Hallelujah. Uh, verses 8 through 10. Let me get there. Zechariah Malachi chapter 3 beginning there at uh, verse uh, 8 and I'm going to stop at verse 10. It says, will a man rob God? Question mark. You, you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Amen. Well, you see that when we don't uh, give what is due to God, he calls it robbery. He says in verse 9, you are cursed with a curse. We just got through talking about the curse. Come on now. Did Jesus bring this curse? No. The curse came because of our disobedience. He said, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me. Come on. One translation said, prove me now. Herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I would not open uh, the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessings, there won't be room enough to receive. Now we know I'm sitting in my house. We, I got plenty of windows in here. Got a lot of windows. Hey, but heaven got more. So when you do what God asks you to do, he says he's going to pour out blessings. There won't be room enough to receive. Look at verse 11. And he goes on to say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Come on now. He going to do the rebuking. Come on now. The enemy, who is the devourer? The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. And the Bible tells us that uh, that uh, the enemy will come. That opens the door. You know, I said in my message, you got to shut all doors. Did you know that not uh, tithing, uh, it could bring a sickness on you? Come on now. The Bible says you are cursed with a curse. Amen. But uh, it tells us that so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. So I see I've said that and I'm sure you've done all that you can do. I want to just share with you how you can give. Amen. You can give three ways. You can give through PayPal, praise God, and go to newbeginningsclc.org. Go to newbeginningsclc.org. Or you can give by cash app. 
Uh, and that is New Beginning CLC. Praise God. New Beginning CLC. Or if you prefer, you can uh, mail your offering in, your tithe in to P.O. Box 320658. And that is 320658, the P.O. Box number. And that is in Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. 39232. And so we just thank God uh, for you uh, this morning. Uh, praise God. Let's pray over our offering. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you give seed to the sower. Amen. You give seed to sow. Thank you for giving us seed to sow. We do not sow begrudgingly or out of necessity, but we sow, Father, with a cheerful prompt to do at heart. And thank you, Father, as we sow this seed. It will be multiplied in the name of Jesus. And you, Father, have promised in your word when we do this, you will rebuke, rebuke the devourer for our sake. Thank you for doing that. Father God, we just thank you that this seed that we are sowing will go forth and be multiplied and it will bring souls into the kingdom in the name of Jesus so that you can be glorified. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, you will increase our seed sown in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we release our angels right now to go forth and bring us that which we have need of, just not for ourselves, but also for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, one last thing I have to do. Amen. Just have a couple of announcements here. Uh, Pastor has already announced them, uh, but uh, we, I wanted me to go over them again. Uh, just a couple Praise God. And that is uh, effective on Saturday, April the 3rd and Sunday, April the 4th at 10 o'clock a.m. We will reconvene in our in-person church services. Praise God at our new home. And that address is 6706 Sowell Road in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, however, though, you have a choice or I, you can, I like to say you have options. If you like to, uh, uh, you choose not to come to the in-person uh, in services, you can also uh, continue to watch on Facebook Live on Sundays. The service will continue at 10 o'clock a.m. You can uh, Facebook Live, just whatever you choose to do. Uh, but also, I want you to know that our normal uh, Wednesday night, uh, uh, services on Facebook Live will continue because we will not be having an in-person service on Wednesday night. It will remain suspended, however, to a later date. But you can continue to come to Facebook Live, amen, at 6 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, amen, praise God, uh, to watch uh, the in-person services. Again, uh, that ends our message today. Uh, thank you for joining in, New Beginnings, all of our Facebook family and friends and supporters and uh, the, the visitors, welcome. On behalf of Pastor Wright and Pastor Leslie, amen, they will be back on Sunday and I I look forward to hearing his teaching and I know that you will too. You guys have a great rest of your day.